Okay. Today we have our 37 ton North Star log splitter. This is how it comes. I uh, suggest if you're going to pick it up from the store and build it on your own, you're going to need a trailer at some point in time. Because uh, in the back of the truck, there's going to be a bitch getting it out. It's about 750 pounds. So we're going to put this thing together today. That's Pops. Uh, this video will be fueled by Bush Beer, Coors Light in a Bottle, and our delicious Dickies lunch that we just got done eating. And uh, stick around. We'll try to run you through everything. All right, we're going to start unboxing. Uh, going to find these bolts right here. Oh, I forgot to mention, you're going to need all this shit, 10 gallons of hydraulic fluid, the oil. And uh, here's all your parts. We're breaking it open. A shit ton of tools. And uh, cordless impacts are going to work good. What size you get on that? 15. A 15 millimeter for the crate bolts. And hopefully I hadn't lost my 15 millimeter wrench yet. And we're going to take it out of the box. All right, we got the motor out. And uh, shaking out the rest of the parts here. Got a big old bundle of stuff. Uh, as you're pulling everything out, the old piece of cardboard will be sitting right there. And the reason being is because that is greasy as shit. And uh, we thought uh, it's probably in the instruction manual somewhere it says probably to grease that. Because that part will be sliding up and down. And then we notice there's a little warning right there. So daily, get your ass out of bed and go grease that bar. We're going to pull that motor out of that box right there and we got all the parts pulled out. And uh, that's attached to uh, some wood down there. And uh, they got that stapled. So you got to pop staples out of the bottom of that there box to get your motor. Okay, so unboxing took forever. Uh, we got it done finally. We, we realized we didn't have any beers open. So uh, now that we got that done, I think this shit's going to go by a lot quicker. All right, another thing. Uh, get all your hardware, break it out, and put similar pieces together. Uh, I'm sure in the assembly instructions somewhere it says to verify all the parts are here. I skipped that part. Uh, so if I got anything missing, um, we'll just have to make runs to Ace and uh, get that stuff complete in. But uh, here's all your bolts. Put all your light stuff together. All right, and uh, I believe the next thing to do is to break off these fenders. And I think the bolts holding the fenders on are going to be disposed bolts. I'm going to keep them all and separate them just in case. And I think we're going to be putting the wheels on pretty soon. We'll show you how that goes. Okay, so. We're still unboxing. I thought we'd start ready to go on with the fenders. We're not ready yet. Um, we got to pull the bar off the crate itself. Uh, take note that I've stuck my hands in this grease about five times so far. Pops is on number four. And uh, whoever's the greasiest at the end of the day has to buy the beers for the Cowboy Sunday game some more. So I'm going to try to keep my nasty hands out of that nasty grease. Um, Use a 13 millimeter socket and wrench to bust off these bolts. These are also a discard bolt. I'm gonna keep them anyway and put them in my little coffee can of random bolts that I keep. Uh, but you got four of them. One, be another one on the other side over there too. Pops getting these over here on the left side. Uh, Keeping these separated from the factory, the actual bolts that go to the uh, the splitter. All those are over there. These discard ones are over here. Keep them separated. Um, got to mention, comes with some pretty badass uh, zip ties. So if you're cheap like me, you're gonna cut those to where you can reuse them there's some good zip ties in there all right so <clears throat> i remember the guy at northern tool shout out to bedford northern tool by the way uh 
think he told me to pull that bar off and go ahead and stand it up. That's going to be difficult for us to do since we're working on this trailer. So I think we may take it down, maybe set it on the ground. That something's just heavy as hell. So use caution on that. It looks like we're going to take the bar off, set it on the ground. Pull these off. This is a 15 millimeter. Uh, no, it was a 14. And we're going to bust these off right here. Those are discard bolts. Take them off. Instructions say those are shipped opposite to where they will go. So if this is the left-hand side of the unit, that left-hand fender will go to the right side. What'd you get there? I don't know what it is. You don't know what that is? Uh, I don't know if that was a packing piece or... No, it was holding it onto the, to the boxing frame. Okay. So it might have been a packing piece, but we also might be using that later on. We'll, uh, we're going to stick that with the all the parts over here all right i'm gonna go find my 14 millimeters start taking them fenders off all right so hope you ate your wheaties this morning we got the bar off that's the splitter that's, the, uh, that's where all the weight is right there that some bitch is heavy 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 heavy, heavy. heavy. all right two or three beer heavy yeah like the one beer that we're in so far wasn't enough uh anyway we're gonna back this trailer all the way up to the shop so we ain't got to carry it that far i'm also going to take a real i'm going to be really observant of what i'm going to have to do with that because if i got to figure out if we're going to stand it straight up or just lay it back down on the ground i think we're going to stand it straight up i think it goes is maybe the base of it right here? I'm going to read the instructions, what do you think? Oh, okay. Maybe it'll say. Yeah. Okay, well, so what we're going to do first, we're going to get this in here. we got the fenders. You put them on opposite sides. We're about to go on with the fenders. That fender, these discard bolts were 13s, by the way. And we ran into two more longer 13 bolts, 13 millimeters, to pull off of that. Now I think we're done with the uncrating. Pick it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's not too much weight, all right? So uh, we're going to get that in the shop and a few of these other pieces, and we'll get back to that bar. All right, can you explain those instructions again if you don't have a, a nut socket big enough for the axle nut uh, to get 30 to 40 foot-pounds? Put a crescent wrench on it, and you crank down onto it till it just starts kind of giving you a little burn on your elbow, and that's uh, 40 pounds. Oh, that's 40 foot-pounds? Okay. All right, that's not explaining the instructions. So you need to remember that. That's just a redneck tip for it. Tip for you. Take that with you. Yeah. Use it in your life. All right, we're putting the wheels on. Uh, pull the wrapping off the axles. Pull the axle nut off of the axle, which is already pre-installed onto the axle. Uh, install the wheel. It's gonna have these caps. One side we have a loose bearing. The other side is going to have the race. All right, that's the side that goes on the uh, that goes towards the tank. That goes towards your hydraulic tank. Did you look to see if these are directional? I don't think they are. You don't think they, they are? Well, for a. Uh, I don't think you get that good as a hydraulic tank. Okay. I think these are rated at like 30 mile an hour, so maybe it doesn't matter if it's directional. Anyways, put the wheel on the axle. Make sure you got your valve stem sticking out. Pretty much goes without saying, but I just said it. What you looking for? A file. That's, that's a bit of a... Oh, it does have a rough edge on it. Uh, instructions say to tighten the axle nut 30 to 40 foot pounds, and then back it back off finger loose. And then reinstall it fingers finger tight snug. I think we're gonna go a little bit tighter than finger snug. And then set your cotter pin in there. It's kind of weird, but uh, we'll get to it. Uh, what size were the uh, the fender bolts? The four or five millimeter? No, no, no. Oh, this? The four? Yeah, four or five. Oh. Let me see. It's still on there. That's fine. Keep on doing what you're doing. Uh, fender bolts are a five millimeter Allen wrench. Uh, it's a fender bolt. 
those that bolt and nut setup is actually in the owner's manual bag for the motor that did not come with all the rest of those four, four lone bolts and nuts we're in a separate bag for some reason it's weird to sell all right going going on with the what you got i'm a little difficult a little bit tighter than the other side a little tighter than the other side nonetheless we got the wheel going on all right we got both wheels on we're going to tighten that to the 40 elbow burning 40 foot pounds and then back it off finger loose and then snug it finger tight and then set the carter pin in bend it on both sides you know how to put a carter pin on we'll get back to you after that okay we're done with the wheel assembly got the cotter pin on there uh and the dust cap cover we put on with the dust cap cover tool and block of wood not supplied had a little hold up had to find a block of wood uh shit there's some right there uh anyways now we're going on with the uh tow bar assembly tow bar assembly goes on to the hydraulic tank and then what are we going to do oh okay so i forgot to mention we went ahead and broke down and started using the uh instructions here and uh okay tools required uh let's see Line the holes in the tow bar, the tow bar mount on the hydraulic tank assembly, reinstall the two bolts and two nuts, tighten with a wrench, 71 foot pounds. You said 18 millimeter? Yeah, I got that. Where were those bolts at? In here. They were already installed in there? Yep. Oh, okay. Finger tight. Yeah, they were in there finger tight. We finger untighten them. Now we're going in with it. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna break out the torque wrench on this. I don't think it's necessary. I'm just going to feel for the 71 foot pounds. All right, so we've got the tow bar on. We put the jack stand on, four bolts. These are the shorter ones. There is a bolt uh, description page on there. It's all millimeters. So, for all you red blooded Americans out there, go ahead and get yourself a millimeter tape measure. Uh, we've got the hydraulic, shortest hydraulic hose installed onto the pre-installed elbow this is pre-installed and you get you a clamp all right there's a little lip on that elbow you want to put this over that all the way put your clamp to the right side of that little lip that's on the elbow recommends 51 foot pounds for this clamp now normally you would never use a torque wrench or wouldn't often use a torque wrench for a clamp bolt but I did. I went ahead and broke out that because I've not done a whole lot of hydraulic stuff. So I want to make sure it was right. I torqued that some bitch down to 51 foot pounds. So that was the first actual torque that we've done today. Uh, two, two bolts. Two bolts. What kind? Oh, no, uh, 13. Two 13 millimeter bolts holding the motor onto the plywood. Yep. Throttle cable is pre installed onto the engine. Uh, we're going to pick that up, carry it on over here. And uh, well, I don't think we're ready for the. Uh, do note there's no there's no oil in the motor, so keep that in mind. Anyways, we're gonna carry it on there. Um, let me find. Did you get the bolts already for that? Yeah. Uh, that's when we started to referring to the bolt description page to make sure that we're using the right stuff. I told you to go ahead and separate your stuff out. Um, so really we just had to figure you had 50 millimeter engine guard to beam. That's your longest bolt. Uh, so we went with the second one down is a 40 millimeter long engine to engine mount on tank on hydraulic tank. So just below the longest and that should be the correct one. And we're about to grab that. We're going to set it on. We'll get you caught up after that. All right, we're going on with the motor uh ratchet and wrench 13 millimeter uh cables coming out we just left it laying long and let's see 
that yeah, wasn't too much to that. That was kind of a two man job right there. Um, one side's a straight hole, the other side's slotted. Easy enough though. All right, so we have one issue going on with that clamp. For some reason, this clamp specs out to 78 inch pounds. That one specs out to 50 inch pounds. 78 is way too fucking tight for that. So I busted one clamp. Hopefully we've got a replacement somewhere in the garage for it. And oh, I'm going to tell you guys, hopefully y'all watch this whole video right here. I went with 55. Hopefully that's strong enough. So that's one of the things that people are bitching about on this splitter. On the, reviews. on the reviews. Is that the hydraulic hoses are coming off. Well, it makes sense. Because I would have, had I not used a torque wrench, I would have stopped well short of 50 inch pounds on that one right there. That and one then like a 78. When we was wanting 78, that was way too tight. It busted it. I went down to 55. Hopefully that's, that's tight enough. Um, if the line comes off, then we'll know why. All right, on with the, what you call it? Um, Don't worry about it. This chain of air right there, there's an arrow. The flow goes that way. You call for any uh, Loctite or anything on that? No, no Loctite. All right, so we're just gonna thread that on there. It said finger tight? Yeah. Finger tight. All right, well, we're gonna consult the Instructions. Oh, Cheers. It says in wrench tight the fitting to 1.5 to 3 turns past finger tight position. Ah, uh -huh, over there. Alright, we'll give it a shot. Okay. So the hydraulic filter line and canister. That was a real specific um, wording on the assembly instructions. Follow it to a T. That sounds pretty important. It didn't call for any Teflon tape. There's some shit on those threads, which I think might help it seal to that. So just do exactly what it says. That way if it screws up, you can blame it on the company. I don't think it will though. It looks pretty good. Mine's a little bit sideways, just a tad bit. That didn't feel comfortable tightening it up more. Not a whole lot on that either. Finger tight, then a quarter another turn. We're about to go on with the eye beam. Right? Yep. Okay. So at this point. Oh, wait, I got the lock on. I got the uh, beam off. Oh, you got the beam. Oh, the outrigger? Yeah. Oh, uh, we skipped the outrigger in, uh, install. But uh, that one went on. One bolt. one bolt. Was that a 15 and a 16? It was. The 15, the old 15 16 combo. All right, what we're going to do, we're going to try to slide this straight off. Straight off the trailer. It's a heavy bit. That's got to turn around, doesn't it? Yeah. Shit. Okay. But once we get it stood up on the ground, we can turn it to grass. It won't be as hard. Okay. So we're just going to slide it right off. We'll put some cardboard there. And kind of okay. And then after we slide it off, you stand it, you slide it and stand it. And then we'll kind of walk it to turn it around to match up to the hydraulic tank. And uh, got the mano tube on, three self tappers. These will be the only ones that are not actual bolts that look like they take nut in their self tapper. You know what I'm talking about. All right, y'all, it's time to go on with the I beam onto the hydraulic tank. And uh, before you go breaking out the floor jack to jack the uh, damn tank up to match these holes, just know this thing right here, that slides up and down, all right? So you just slide it up till you match up them holes. Those were the pre-installed, those are pre-installed on this plate, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you had to break those off, put the beam up there, wedge your tank up there, and then stick your, uh, your bolts back on, 71 foot-pounds. Okay. Beams on there, tighten the shell of those. That's 71 foot pounds, both sides, 18, 18 millimeters. And then your latch, leave those loose. 
lower it down put your pin in there line the beam up we'll make sure that pin kind of in there kind of goes in and out i think once the paint kind of loosens up that'll be a little bit easier but you want to make sure that goes in and out easy before you tighten them up again 71 foot pounds i hadn't broke out the big torque wrench yet i just tightened the shit out of them we're gonna roll this organize uh, this thing inside and finish the rest of this operation in the shop have a little bit better light and yeah, we'll be closer to the beer ready all right crouch through the hose guy okay all right what does it say do oh by the way we just got done installing the uh table guards you're gonna need somebody to help you install those going from the front of the motor to where grab the unattached end of cable from engine downward towards engine mount bracket ensure cable wraps through the hose guide oh, okay so we're probably gonna go down there we'll take a look and we'll get oh, done the hose guide is that there's a round red bar I saw on the yeah I see that huh? yep. that bar right there yeah all right all right uh probably skipped a few steps on this install i think we left off a throttle cable we routed it um down through here at the bottom it bolts right there all right real easy hook up one of them flange nuts flange bolts comes up through that comes down through here and you hook it all up to this assembly and that's done with a 13 millimeter flange uh, bolt and nut it says place in the center that didn't really work with this i'm still trying to figure out what's going on here after this whole thing gets rolling uh we had to adjust this out just to pull this out so i'm sure there's more adjustments to be done on the throttle cable this really isn't jiving right now we're, we're going to figure it out though <coughs> install this bar <coughs> uh, you get three washers, one, two, three washers on the bottom of that install, and then uh, that uh, little hose or uh, throttle cable clamp acts as your washer on that one. And then you start installing this one. You subassemble this onto this. Uh, don't put it backwards like some of us tried to. Right? Okay. <laughs> um, you turn that in, follow your instructions. You put the handle on first, you thread this in, doo, doo, doo. and then once you get it in there, then you use your wrench to tighten down on that. You want this orientation going up <clears throat> like this, like that. And, uh, and then you lock down on this one. You just follow the instructions. You lock down on that one. <clears throat> the next one they say is put on here. It goes 45 degrees between here and that way. So it goes at a 45. Whoosh. All right, put it on there. Tighten that one up. Uh, I think the next one was that one. That one goes straight up to the best of our ability. This one straight up. And what are we on right now? Oh, the up down. Don't get the up down upside down. All right. So, uh, depending upon which way you're standing and how many beers you've been into this will be the way that decides how you install that. <clears throat> All right. We'll put that on and probably a couple more hoses. I'm getting low on parts. Must mean, I mean, I'm almost done. I'm ready to split some. It's cold out here. We, uh. Got the heaters out. We done ran that one out right there and had to go to electric. Where are we at? All right. So we've got everything together. Uh, where's that handy dandy? Okay. Um, run all the lines, just like it says. My filter ended up a little bit sideways. We couldn't really get the three and a half to six turns on that there fitting and then also that one. We got about three. Open this up. Well, we got four on that one and three on that one. And that shit is tight as hell. So, 
That ought to be enough. My filter's a little bit sideways. We got all this stuff off. We had busted one of these because it said to run 70, 76, 71 um, inch pounds. That's way too much. Uh, this is a little bit heavy duty clamp that we stuck up here to replace the one that we busted. I uh, recommend 55 inch pounds on <clears throat> the factory ones. And uh, that's one of the main complaints on there. Uh, you might as well just go ahead and get some he more heavy duty ones while you're out if you want. They want to run them at 70 inch pounds. This took a 516 um, nut runner, while the other ones were a uh, 930 seconds or more equivalent to, I think, a quarter inch. Uh, <clears throat> made this special tool. Seven eight. We ground it down so that it would fit in here. That one. That one right there. That one's a bitch to get to. That one tightens up just fine because you can get the full length on that. But when you're using a 7 8 wrench on these, the fitting goes up in there more. That's tough to get to. <clears throat> um, they don't say anything about nylon tape or Teflon tape. The guy at Northern Tool said something about it, but the uh, the assembly instructions say nothing. So on all these, they say to grease this or uh, lube them with oil. So we got oil on all those. And these, they said nothing about oil, so we use this Teflon tape on your high-pressure hoses right here and here and there. And then on the, uh, the other side where that hooks up. Found it easier to raise up the mast <clears throat> for the I-beam when hooking these hoses up because the shit's so tight that was tough getting on there and routing that up this stuff was tight I put the larger hose in front of the smaller hose it doesn't really say in the assembly instructions on which one goes in front and which one goes in back I put that larger one up front and for that larger one it was it was a help just standing the, the beam up <clears throat> You route it, stand it up, and then put in the fittings. And then we're having trouble with the throttle cable. <clears throat> There's no clearance right here. It says to mount those bolts right there in the middle. And that ain't uh, that ain't working. So we're trying to figure out what's going on there. Um, <clears throat> choke lever is clear. The throttle lever is not. That's just stuck. So working on that right now. <clears throat> All right, we're done. And we figured out throttle mechanism, which is what they advertise that at the return, it gets optimized optimization of fuel. And that's why you click right there. Uh, we've got our set all the way to the back. A little bit out right there. All right couple 13 millimeters you can adjust that uh, your motor oil one quart 1030 and hydraulic fluid calls for nine gallons start with eight because uh, if you don't well actually we put in eight that eight it started overflowing and it overflowed but we had to put another couple at least a couple quarts three four quarts in so i dumped a couple quarts out because it was overflowed cycled it do as the instructions say cycle it pour your spark plug cycle it put the spark plug back on check it fire it up and uh cycle it, cycle it again five more times you're going to want to cycle it up here and then uh, after you're done cycling kill it Check it again, and uh, let's see what we get here, because I want everybody to see. Yeah. I'm already good and warmed up, but I'd let it warm up initially. It's pretty much cold out here, so we would let it warm up for a while.
don't know about that jack stand. We had to flip our plate over and raise it up. We switched the holes, trying to get a little bit more level. Uh, three inches. So it's come up three inches to be level. messing us up on the, uh, the throttle. We, we just didn't understand what was going on there. So I tried to idle as low as we could without killing it when we go down. This might have been a factor of why the hell it took so damn long. All right, man. Put it up for the night. Go. Tell you what we're gonna do is carry that uh, special seven eighths wrench yeah. tomorrow, Just making sure that all that's still tight, and uh, some crescent wrenches. Double checking all these hydraulic lines. Carry the thirteen millimeters for this right here, <clears throat> and uh, chop a bunch of wood. The chop a bunch of wood. Definitely recommend go ahead and getting some heavy duty or of these right here yeah uh the ones that give you a complete crap and they will not hit the 70 inch pounds as recommended so all right that's it man hope y'all enjoyed click the like button subscribe to my page there'll be more red next year to come okay yeah. yep some pretty big stuff today. When you're working that there lever, you need to watch it when it pops back. Make sure you don't pop you in the head. Stuff's breaking off pretty quick. Watch that lever when it goes up all the way back up. Pop you right in the head if you ain't careful. That's it, y'all. We're gonna get to work. Uh, good beers at the end of the day. We're gonna try to stay sober as we're uh, operating here in this here machine. Uh, I don't wanna walk around tomorrow looking like that. <laughs>